All right, so in part one, we need to rewrite each polynomial in standard form and name the polynomial by degree and number of terms. Okay, Kirvin, what's our degree? What do we call something with a degree of three? Cubic. And how many terms does it have? One term. And what do we call something with one term? Monomial. Monomial. Now number two. Cubic yes, because cubic is the name of something with the degree of three. Okay. So when we're talking about degree, we're talking about the x with the highest exponent. So here we have x with an exponent of one. So what's our degree? Uh, Zero. Oh, wait, one. one. And what do we call something with the degree of one? Linear. 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 And how many terms do we have? We have two, two terms. Remember, all of the terms that we have count for our terms. So even though it's a constant and it doesn't have any x's, it's still a term. So there's two here, and it's binomial. OK, number three. Yeah. What's our degree? Five. Five. And how many terms do we have? Um, four. 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 What do we call something with the degree of five? Quintic. 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 Yeah. And what do we call something with four terms? Polynomial with four terms. Polynomial with four terms. How do we rewrite this in standard form? Perfect. So we start with our highest exponent. So x to the 5 is our highest, and then we just go to the second highest, third, and then our smallest. Okay, I'm going to do the first three, or the first three or two, depending on how many are in each section. But the last one I'm going to leave for you guys to do. Oh. So let's go to number 5. So describe the end behavior of each polynomial. So what term are we looking at here? X to the 6. Is this positive or negative? Positive. And is it even or odd? Even. even. So since it's positive, we know it's going to end going up. Does even mean that they're going to go same. in the same direction or opposite directions? Same, same direction. So we have up and up. Did you, did you okay, let's go to number 6. What term are we looking at here? X to the 8. Is x to the 8 positive or negative? Positive. So it's going to end going up. And is it even or odd? Even. even. So, they so they go in the same direction. So we have up and up again. OK, let's go to 7. What term are we looking at here? X to the 9. Is this positive or negative? So it's positive, and it's going to end going up. Is it even or odd? Odd. Odd. So they're going to go in opposite directions. So how's it going to start? Up and down. Down and up. Remember, if it's positive, it's always going to end going up. <coughs> so if it's positive, you're going to end on a positive note. And if it's negative, it ends going down. Right. right. If it's negative and odd, it will be up then down. Okay, number nine. So if it's negative and odd, it goes down and down. Remember, odd means opposite directions. So if it's negative, if it's it goes negative, down, and if it's odd, it goes up. So up and then down. If it's negative, it goes into the next part. Okay, let's look at number nine. So find all zeros and graph. So how do we find the zeros here? So we have negative x plus two is equal to zero, negative x 
minus 5 is equal to 0. Are we missing one? No, x equals 0. You can't forget about this x. A lot of people forgot about that one on the quiz. So we need x equal to 0, negative x plus 2 is equal to 0, and negative x plus 5 is equal to 0. So with these, when we have a negative x, we can just add x to both sides. So we get negative 5 is equal to x, and we get 2 is equal to x. So our three zeros are x is equal to 0. This is 2 is equal to x. No, because we can either subtract the 2 on both sides and then divide by negative 1, or we can just add the x to both sides. And then our last one is negative 5 is equal to x. Well, now we have to graph it. The graphing is necessary. Okay, how many x's do we have in this equation? Three. So we're looking at an x cubed graph. Are any of those x's, do any of them have negative signs in front of it in the equation? Yeah. Yeah, how many of them? Three. What do two negatives make? Right, so it's a positive x cubed graph. So we're going to graph our points. So we have 0, yeah, 2, no. and negative 5. And positive means that it's going to end doing what? Go going up. And odd means that it's going to go in the same direction or opposite. 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 So it's going to start going down, and then we just put a line through all the dots. Okay, ready for number 10? What are we going to do first here? So x is equal to 4 in the second one. And what about the first one? x is equal to 1. Perfect. So these are two points that we need to graph. So we're going to graph 1 and 4. How many x's do we have in this equation? 2. Two. So we have an x squared graph. How many of these x's have a negative sign in front? 1. one. So it's going to be a negative x squared graph. Yeah. If it's negative, how does it end? Down. Down. And if it's even, they go in the same direction, so it has to start going down. So our graph is going to look like that. Because this x right here has a negative sign. So since one of our x's has a negative, our graph is negative x squared. Okay, number 11 you guys are going to do on your own. So let's go to the next page. You're going to have two questions from the first section, two from the second, two from the third. So let's look at number 12. Factor the sum of cubes. How do we know our signs are going to go in our equation for cubes? The sum of cubes. Plus minus plus. So we're going to have a plus b, a squared, a, B, and then B squared. So what is our A here? Our A is X, and our B is? B. It's two. two. So we need a number cubed that gives us eight. So on one of the PowerPoints, it gave us th common cubed numbers. So one cubed is equal to one. 2 cubed is equal to 8, 3 cubed is equal to 27, 4 cubed is 64, and 5 cubed is 125. So these are common cubes that you need to know. 
So since 2 cubed is 8, B has to be 2. So now we're going to put that into our formula. So our signs are going to be plus, minus, plus. And what's going to go in our first parentheses? X plus, what's, X plus 2. And then we have X squared. Minus 2X. And then plus 2 squared, which is 4. And this is our answer. Okay, let's go to 13. What's our A? 4X. Four 4X, four perfect. And what's our B? 5. Five. How do our signs go in the sum of cubes? Plus, minus, plus. Plus, minus, plus. What's going to go in the first parentheses? 4X four. Four four plus 5. And then what comes next? So it's 4x squared. So remember, we need to square the 4 and square the x. So it's 16x squared. 16x squared. Perfect. What's going to come next? 8a times b. So 20x. So we multiply 5 times 4x. We get 20x. And then last. 25. Perfect. Why is it plus plus 5? Because, because it's A plus B. So since this is our A and that's our B. Okay, so 14 you guys are going to do on your own. So let's go to 15. How do our signs go in the difference of cubes? Minus plus plus. plus. What's up? Okay, so we're going to have A minus B, A squared, A times B, and B squared. Same thing as before, but just our signs are a little different. What's our A? And what's our B? 5 what? 5x. So our signs are going to go minus, plus, plus. What's going to go in our first parentheses? 4 minus 5x. What comes next? 5x squared. So our a squared comes next. What's our a? 4. Four. Oh. So what's 4 squared? 16. So just 16. Because our a is just 4. So 4 squared is 16. a times b comes next. So what's a times b? 20. 20x, and then last we have b squared, 25 what? x squared, so remember when we have 5x squared, we have to square the 5 and we square the x. So this is our final answer. Okay, 16. What's our A and what's our B? Um, four. For what? Um, and what's our B? Um, what cubed gives us 27? Three. Three. Perfect. So in our parentheses, our signs are going to go minus, plus, plus. So what's going to go in our first parentheses? Um, Four m minus three. three. Perfect. Next we have a squared. So sixteen m squared. And then what comes next? Twelve m. And what's going to come last? Nine. Because it's 4m squared, so you have to square the 4 and square the m. Yes, because m squared is 
um, squared. So that's why you have to keep it there. Okay, 17 you guys are going to do on your own, so let's go to 18. We need to factor each by grouping. How do we factor by grouping? What's the first thing we need to do? Put a line down the middle. We divide it in half. So in our first half, what are we going to take out? X squared. What do we have left when we take out X squared? I'm sorry, So we have x minus 3. Perfect. In the second half, what do we take out? X minus 3? What do we take out? 4. So what are we left with? X minus 3. So our goal is to get this parenthesis and this parenthesis to be the same. So they're the same. Perfect. So now we can take what we pulled out and put those into its own parentheses. So we have x squared plus four in the first parentheses and x minus three in our second. So we got three because we took out a four, so we divided both of these by four. So there we're just left with x, and then in the second one, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Okay, let's do number 19. So first we need to split it in half. What can we take out of our first half? x squared. Remember, we're taking out the greatest common factor, so since this has 3x's and this has 2, we can take out 2. So what do we have left with? X minus three. Perfect. So now what can we take out of our second half? Negative three. So when we divide both of these by negative three, what are we left with? X minus three. So now we're gonna take these two terms and put them into their own parentheses. So we have x squared minus 3. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take the other two terms, this one and this one, we're going to combine it into 1, x minus 3. Can I see the other problem? On the quiz tomorrow, the test. the test, and then 3 from each of the new sections. Yep.